Good evening, Good evening. and welcome, welcome to the Upper St. Clair High School production, School production of the Drowsy Drow Chaperone. I am Alexa Rigger, the stage manager. And I am Mia Taylor, the student producer. The Drowsy Chaperone is a comedy with music and lyrics written, written by Lisa Lambert and Greg Morrison. Each year, the musical company chooses a charity to donate to that is close to our hearts. This year, we have chosen the Education Partnership in order to donate musical instruments to two elementary schools in need. If each audience member donates just $1, you will help us reach our goal. Thank you for your generosity. In addition, the role of Gangster Number 2 will be performed by Tyler Carroll tonight. Tonight's show is underwritten by Artelino's Pizza and dedicated to music education in our schools. We hope that you enjoy the show. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this poo-poo platter of tunes. I hate theater. Well, it, it's so disappointing, isn't it? You know what I do when I'm sitting in a darkened theater, waiting for the show to begin? I pray. <clears throat> oh, dear God, please let it be a good show. And let it be short. Oh, Lord in heaven, please. Two hours is fine, but three hours is way too much. And keep the actors out of the audience, God. I didn't pay good money to have the fourth wall come crashing down around my ears. I just want a good show and a little tune to carry with me on my way out, you know? I just want to be entertained. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Amen. You know? There was a time when people sat in darkened theaters and they thought to themselves, what have George and Ira Gershwin got for us tonight? <laughs> or can Cole Porter pull it off again? Well, now it's police, Elton John. Must we continue this charade? It used to be sitting there in the dark, you knew that when the show began, you would be taken to a world full of music and color and glamour. And you sat there and you thought to yourself, my God, when are they going to bring up the lights? Oh, how the times have changed. <laughs> Hello. How are we today? Good. I'm feeling a little blue myself. You know, a little anxious for no particular reason. A little sad that I should feel anxious at this age. You know a self-conscious anxiety resulting from a non-specific sadness. A state that I call blue. Anyway, whenever I'm feeling this way, blue, I like to listen to my music. So, I was going through my records, yes, records, and I was about to put on Meredith Wilson's original production of The Music Man. I had a craving for a young Ronnie Howard. <laughs> but then I thought, no, let's have a treat. Let's disappear into the decadent world of the 1920s, where the champagne flowed and the caviar chilled and all the world was a party. For the wealthy, anyway. So, I dug about, and what did I find? Oh, but one of my favorite shows. Gable and Steins, the drowsy chaperone. Remember? <laughs> Music by Julie Gable, lyrics by Sidney Stein. It's a two record set, remastered from the original production made back in 1928. It's the full show with the original cast, including Beatrice Stockwell as the chaperone. Oh, oh isn't she elegant? And this is a full 15 years before she became Dame Beatrice Stockwell. Here, let me read for you what it says on the back. <clears throat> Mix-ups, mayhem, and a gay wedding. Well, the gay wedding has a different meaning now. <laughs> but back then it just meant fun. And that's what the show is. Fun. 
So, would you indulge me? Would you let me play the record for you now? I was hoping you'd say yes. You hear that static? I love that sound. To me, it's the sound of a time machine starting up. Okay, now let's imagine. Visualize, if you will. It's November 1928, and you're at the doors of the Morosco Theater in New York. Before it was torn down and replaced by a parking lot. Anyways, it's very cold. <laughs> Remember when it used to be cold in November? <laughs> Not anymore. November's the new August. It doesn't matter, though. It's global warming. We're all doomed anyway. Oh, but it's very cold, and this dark, heavy, gray sleet, sleet starts to fall down. But you don't care because you're about to see a Broadway show. Listen. Isn't this wonderful? Oh. Well, it helps if you close your eyes. <laughs> Overtures. Overtures are out of style now. I miss them. It's like a show's way of welcoming you. <laughs> Hello. Your meal will be served shortly, but while you're waiting, would you like an appetizer? That's what a overture is, a musical appetizer. A poo-poo platter of tunes, if you will. What's this? It kind of sounds like a dance tune. Sort of rollicking. Maybe there's gonna be pirates. Don't worry, there are no pirates.
pleasure airing it, restitching and preparing it. God bless your dress, it's one fine dress. And I will tell you why you put it on. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime. Madam, you're the hostess and it's happy wedding time. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime. Wedding bells will ding a ling and we will sing along.
Wasn't that wonderful? And we will ding along. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Okay, I'll do my best to lead you through this record the best that I can. Don't worry, it won't be hard to follow. So, we start with a welcome from our love-struck groom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I must be some lucky guy. Who would have thought that I, Robert Martin, would be marrying a glamorous showgirl, and that glamorous showgirl would be willing to give up a successful career for me, Robert Martin. Now, if it weren't for prohibition, I'd say let's raise a glass. Here, here. <laughs> to Miss Janet Vandergraaff, the most beautiful girl in the world. Absolutely not. Excuse me. The groom mustn't see his bride on the day of the wedding. It's bad luck. I hope you heard that, because that's the plot, basically. Hang on for the ride. Breakfast will be served in the Arabian room. Say, it's a little early in the day to be drinking, isn't it? I don't understand the question. Look, you're the chaperone. You keep Janet away from Robert. You understand? That's her only job. Aye, aye, mon capitan. Oh, Robert, who's my little monkey? I am. I'm your little monkey. So, with the bride and groom whisked away, we turn our attention to the B-plot, which involves the producer. Mr. Felsey? Getting married and leaving show business. Mr. Felsey! Doesn't she know I got obligations? Mr. Felsey! I can be your new leading lady. You said it yourself. I'm useless in the chorus. Kitty, for the last time, you ain't got what it takes. But I've been taking lessons. Singing, acting, ballet. Ballet? Yeah, I'm real good too. Last week, I auditioned for Swanee Lake. A little annotation. Kitty and Felzig were a couple in real life. Jack and Sadie Adler. Now, this is a familiar comic construct. A stupid woman and her long-suffering companion. Well, you think she's stupid, but then in the end she ends up doing something clever, which makes everyone question whether it was just an act. The irony here is that Sadie Adler was actually quite stupid. Jack had to explain all the jokes to her, apparently. Still, she had a wonderful career on the stage. I mean, back then, the stage was the only place a stupid person could make a decent living. This was before television, of course. <laughs> Kitty, I don't have time for this. A petty fall, Mr. Feldzig? Not now. Then perhaps a nice profiterole. Boys, I'm not hungry. Then perhaps we could give you something else to chew on. Yeah, something that ain't food. What? Your confusion is to be expected. Allow me to elucidate. Although we stand here before you in the guise of innocent pastry chefs, we are also... And primarily... Employees of a certain individual. A certain individual? A certain individual who happens to be the largest single investor in Felsing's follies. He has sent us here as pastry chefs to express his concerns about Miss Vandegraaff's impending nuptials. Specifically, that if she were to get married and leave the show, then, then there, there ain't, ain't no, no show. Say, don't I know you? No, you do not. Have you ever spent any time in Toledo? Have you ever spent any time in a coma? No. But I have a cousin in Seattle. Kitty, boys, tell your boss this wedding is never gonna happen. You have my word. Oh, we'll take your word, all right. But to go back on that word would be a recipe for disaster. Now, we hope we have made ourselves perfectly eclair. One can only hope. You biscotti be kidding me. A trifle much? Don't tart with me. 
All right, you can drop the pastry chef routine. Alas, we ganashed. <laughs> We're on the lamb. Lamb's an entree, you macaroon. <laughs> The gangsters were played by interchangeable vaudeville duo, the Tall Brothers, John and Peter Tall. They were originally named Abram and Mendel Moldlikovitz, but they were renamed at Ellis Island by a sarcastic immigration official. Now, they were an example of your early Broadway gangster, full of wordplay and stylized movements. Not very intimidating. Unless you find dancers intimidating, which I do, but for reasons that would not be appropriate for this situation. We'll leave the matter in your hands, Mr. Feldzig. In the meantime, feel free to browse the dessert carousel. Try the Toledo surprise. It's to die for! Holy cats, Mr. Feldzig! They're gangsters from Ohio! Very perceptive. Now go powder your face. I gotta stop this wedding. But how? Oh, Lord in heaven. How? 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 I always thought that moment was a little overplayed. Anyway, with the plot well on its way, we turn our attention to the groom's room. Show me those pearly whites. Well, the groom was played by the dashing Percy Hyman. Oh, he was the Albright toothpaste man. His fabulous smile adorned every single tooth. Well, Albright was hugely popular in the 1920s, well, because it contained cocaine. Well, it's true. It was the fifth ingredient down, right after sugar. <laughs> Still, Albright was hugely popular in the 1920s, and it wasn't long before he was a huge matinee idol. It's perfectly normal for a groom to be nervous on his wedding day. It is? Of course! I love Percy Hyman. Now, some people say he was a bad performer, but to those people, I say shut up! Hey there, Mr. Mirabelle. Shaking and a quaking, trembling like them Freddy cats do. Something big be bothering you. And I think I know what it is. Cold feet, cold feet, brother, you got cold feet. You can make them cold feet hot with a little rhythm, young feet. Old feet can be uncontrolled feet. Rhythm make them cold feet trot down the aisle. Cross the arches, they can learn to swing. I see toes can jive. Wedding marches played in ragtime swing. Make Bridget's souls come alive and take that dive. Cold feet, throw feet, turn them into bow feet, really make them cold feet. Hot, you don't say. Well, why don't you just slime back into your mud hole, you backstabbing worm? Duh. Well, now I have to find another minister. Say, what are you up to? Uh, I'm just singing a song an old Negro taught me. A Dixie remedy for wedding day jitters. Ha, you think you've got jitters? You've got the easy part. I still gotta get rice, boutonnieres, and a minister. I have the weight of the wedding on my shoulders. George, it sounds like you've got cold feet. What do I got? Cold feet. What do I want? Cold feet. What do I do? Skull feet? No! You make cold feet hot.
George, you're dancing. I am. I am. George, this is a mighty fine tap water. Percy Hyman was a wonderful performer. Oh, I like to think of him panting and sweating after a nice, long dance routine. <laughs> He's still alive, you know. I saw him on the news recently celebrating his 100th birthday. But to say that the years had taken their toll on him would be a grotesque understatement. Well, they wheeled him out, and he had that wide-eyed expression of pain confusion that God reserves for the very, very old on their birthdays. You know, the one that says, Who are you? Who am I? Why is this cake on fire? You know what I'm talking about? Anyways. Well, that's enough for that. Dancing around like a fool. I'm sorry, George. I'm just a bit nervous. It is my wedding day, after all. Well, you could have snapped an ankle. Tap dancing is too dangerous. Huh. Why don't you go out for a skate instead? That's what I do when I want to blow off some steam. George, what would I do without you? <laughs> Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. What was I thinking? You can't go out like that. You might see Janet. Here. Put on this blindfold. <laughs> George, you think of everything. Just looking out for you, my boy. And no more tap dancing. Wedding bells will ring. Wedding bells will chime. Wedding bells will celebrate. Just ignore it. It does this occasionally. It rings. <laughs> Just ignore it. It will stop soon. What? Huh? What do you want? Hello. You have reached my answer. Leave a short message after the tone, and I'll call you back for my convenience. Well, that's it. The moment is ruined. Thank you. Thank you, life. It's like a phone going off in a theater. God, I hate that. Hello. What are you doing today? Oh, I'm at the theater ruining the moment. How about you? Oh, I couldn't get out tonight, so I'm ruining the moment by proxy. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's just forget about that. Let's go back in our minds to 1928. They didn't have telephones back in 1928, but I'm sure they had something for the ruining of moments. Bugles or something. 
We turn our attention to the bride, the fabulous Janet Vandegrift, as she entertains questions by reporters while she lounges by the pool. Miss Vandegrift, is it true that you're giving up a successful career to marry a man you hardly know? Yes. Robert and I met on the Lido deck at the Ile de France. He amused me with stories of his father's oil interests. We spooned briefly, and then he proposed. I shan't. You shan't? I shan't. Can we quote you on that? Of course. One more question? Yes. Why in the world would anyone put olives in a Gibson? I got a question. How can you give up the footlight when you know very well you got grease paint in your veins? Victor, please. Oh, Janet. I'm begging you. Dump the mug. Stay with the follies. I'll give you anything you want. I'll... I'll find. I'll put your name above mine on the marquee. Oh, Victor, if you think this is about vanity, you couldn't be more wrong. I don't want to show off no more. I don't want to sing tunes no more. I don't want to ride moons no more. I don't want to show off. I don't want to wear this no more. Play the saucy Swiss Miss no more. Blow my signature no more. I don't want to show off. Janet, please. Don't try to control me. I've made up my mind. And that's it. I'm leaving it all behind. I don't want to be cute no more. Make the gentleman hoot no more. I don't want to wear fruit no more. I don't want to show off.
Did I miss something? Well, Mr. Felty, it is painfully obvious that Miss Vandegraaff has no desire to continue a life on the stage. Can't you see? It's killing her soul. Don't worry, boys. This isn't over yet. Yeah. Jane Roberts was the bride. She was the Oops Girl. Surely you guys know who the Oops Girl is, right? Remember? Or don't you people read? Or she was the girl whose sexual energy was so great that it caused men to have accidents. Spilled their drinks, crashed their cars into trees. And she would go, Well, I can't really do it justice, but people ate it up. She even had a whole series of films. Oops. The Oops Girl. Oops Girl comes home. And Oops Girl, let's see, which won an Oscar for special effects. Janet, Janet, autograph, Janet. Okay. Begging and groveling didn't work. On to plan B. And for that, I'm gonna need an accomplice. Someone gullible with loose morals. I need a, what do you call him? A European. La 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 la. In walks Aldolfo, self-proclaimed ladies man. Adolfo was played by former silent film star and world-class alcoholic, Roman Bartelli. He's the one who later drank himself to death in his chateau in Nice, remember? It was five days before they found the body, and by then it had been consumed by his poodles. Well, it was only partially consumed. Excuse me, I don't believe we've met. I come. Adolfo! <laughs> you are Adolfo? Yes! I am Adolfo! <laughs> Not the Adolfo. Yes! I am Adolfo! <laughs> Funny. You don't look like a scoundrel. Yes! What? Why, just now, I overheard the groom saying that Adolfo is a scoundrel. I just heard him say that. Adolfo is a scoundrel. Those very words. Adolfo is a scoundrel. It's like I'm hearing it again. This is outrageous. He, he is saying this to peoples, to, to beautiful ladies with breasts for making love. Why, I must, uh, I must, uh, you must. You must take matters into your own hands. Yes. Adolfo will take out his crew into his hands and kill him. Yes, no, no. Don't kill him. Just hurt him enough so he can't get married. Ah, show me to the crew. Wait. What? What kind of a man is this groom? Big man! Well... Burly fellow! Well, he's big on the outside. Oh, no, no, no. Adolfo will not fight big man. 
Small, pale, uh, wheezy little dwarf people at Darfok in Punt. Far away. <laughs> but no big man. So you're a lover, not a fighter. Yes. A Darfok is a lover, beautiful lady. Some call me the king of romance. <laughs> well, you know what they say. The best way to get back at a man is through his... And door! No. no. The best way to get revenge on a man is through his... Window! No. Revenge. Back at a man. Through his... Through his... Through his... There is no other way. I am not Santa Claus climbing down chimney. Through his woman. Ah, his woman. Yes, Adolfo, you must seduce his woman. His woman! His bride. Ah! Adolfo will make love to bride. That will show people that Adolfo is no scoundrel. Show me to the bride. And wait! What? What kind of a woman is this bride? Big woman! No! Burly woman! No, she's the cat pajamas. Pajamas. She's a looker, an attractive woman. Ah! Show me to this captain pajamas. A dolphin will make her purr. Stop like a cat. In pajamas! Roman Bartelli chewing the scenery. <laughs> well, you couldn't get away with a performance like that nowadays, could you? <laughs> no, mature contemporary audiences are far too sophisticated for broad racial stereotypes like that on the stage. So, we banished them to Disney. <laughs> Let the children sort it out. Yes, madam. The pastry chefs have been kind enough to supply the liquor for the party. But remember, Underling, we have to be discreet. Yes, madam. It is the prohibition, after all. I'm aware of that, madam. We'll have to use code words. For instance, if someone asks for a glass of ice water, it means they want a glass of vodka. Have you got that? Yes, madam. Are you sure? Maybe you should write it down. I understand, madam. A glass of ice water is a glass of vodka. What's a glass of ice water? Vodka. Ice water? Vodka. I fuck up! Well, <laughs> you see, that's settled then. One less thing to do. <laughs> Underling, might I please have a glass of ice water? I found our meeting with the pastry chefs rather trying, and I would enjoy a glass of refreshing ice water. Your ice water, madam? <laughs> You poop! I hate this scene. <laughs> well, now <laughs> I really do need a glass of ice water. A glass of ice water, madam? Yes, ice water. Are you going deep? Would that I were. You can see where this is going, can't you? It's really just a series of spit takes. Your Ice water, madam. That was pure vodka, you poop. 
You know, the drowsy chaperone was quite progressive. Your ice water, madam. That was pure vodka, you poop. Yes, some elements were quite progressive. Others were stale in 1928. You know what? I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm going to find some lime juice, madam. Lime juice? For heaven's sake, why? I'm going to wring out my eyebrows and make myself a gimlet. <laughs> Now, I bet you're wondering, what was that scene doing in the show? Well, it, it's simple. There's a song coming up, and they needed time for the set to change. It's mechanics. It's like pornography. Well, let me explain what I mean by that. In pornography, the story is very simplistic. How am I going to pay for this pizza? <laughs> being the classic example. Well, as in a musical, the story only exists to connect you to the longer, more engaging production numbers. What? Well, what kind of society do we live in if I can't compare the similarities between pornography and musical theater? <laughs> Robert Martin. Oh, my head is spinning. Yes, life is a mad whirlwind. Now, this is a really interesting scene. This is the only time that Jane Roberts and Beatrice Stockwell are alone together on stage. Now, Jane Roberts was an emerging star, but Beatrice, Beatrice Stockwell was well established and a force to contend with. I'm so full of apprehension. But I suppose that's normal, considering the circumstances. Have you ever been married, Chaperone? <laughs> no. I drink for pleasure. Not out of necessity. Your ice water, madam? I'm afraid we're fresh out of olives. Underling, have you ever been married? Heavens no, madam. If I'm going to serve a woman, I prefer to be paid for my efforts. Oh, you too. I know it seems crazy to give up a successful career to marry a man I hardly know. But somehow, for some reason, when I look into his eyes, his big monkey eyes, ah, gee, I get all woozy. And that's love, isn't it? Necessarily, a wooziness can be caused by any number of things. I mean, I'm woozy right now, and I'm certainly not in love. Now, Beatrice Stockwell was famous for her rousing anthems. She inspired and entertained troops in every major world conflict, up to and including the Falcon's War. By then, she was 80 years old. So she didn't really rouse as much as she did stupefy. But she still wanted a rousing anthem to be included in every show she ever did, even if it wasn't appropriate. But you couldn't say no to her. Now that's star power. Really, you're not being the least bit helpful. Couldn't you at least allay my fears with a few choice words of inspiration? Inspiration? Really, dear, that isn't my forte. Yes, but if you... As we stumble along on life's funny journey, as we stumble along into the blue, we look here and we 
we look there, seeking answers anywhere, never sure of where to turn or what to do. Still we bumble our way through life's crazy labyrinth, barely knowing left from right nor right from wrong. That was, that was quite nice chaperone, but I don't see how that pertains to my situation. Oh, let me explain. dismal little world in which we live. It can bore you until you've nothing left to give. Seven overrated wonders, seven underwhelming seas, six excruciating continents, Antarctica. Oh, please. Antarctica, oh, please. <laughs> Still, you mustn't let it lick you this planet, oh, so bland. Keep your eyeball on the highball in your head. As we stumble along, cross life's crowded dance floor, we push and we shove, we live and we learn. And when we finally leave the bar and we see that morning star, we pull our bootstraps up and homeward turn. Then we stumble away through dark. Wonderful. <laughs> Basically, she sings a rousing anthem about alcoholism. I think that's what I like about her. She does whatever she wants, regardless of the needs and concerns of others. My mother was like that. That was quite inspiring, Chaperone. But I'm still conflicted. Oh, please, just tell me. Is Robert the man for me? My dear, that is something you will have to decide for yourself. But I just don't know if he loves me. Why don't you ask him? Go to him and say, Roger, do you love me? It's Robert. 
And I'm not allowed to see him. In fact, it's your job to keep me away from him. You're right. You're right, and I take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, but I am just this moment feeling terribly, terribly drowsy, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to have a lie you down. But <clears throat> whatever you do, don't go wandering through the garden, seeking out your fiancé to ask him the question on which your future happiness depends. <laughs> oh, thank you, chaperone. I just have to know if he loves me. Oh, what a shame. All that love wasted on the youth. Still, I envy her. Oh, when will love come crashing through my door? <laughs> Look who it is! It's Aldolfo, come to seduce the bride. I am... Aldolfo. Try not to think about the poodles while you're listening to this part. I am Aldolfo, and you are bride. <laughs> no, I am not. What? This is bridal suite? And you are the only one here, therefore, she must be bride. Interesting argument, but I'm afraid you are a moron. What? Me? Uh, no. Bride. Perhaps I could take a message. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Dear Van de Graaff Bride, I must make love to you and transport you to the place of ecstasy. Sooner is better, signed Adolfo, King of Romance. <laughs> You saw through my little ruse. You found me out. Ah! So you are the bride. Apparently, yes. <laughs> Take me, Aldolface. No, no, no! Not Aldolface, Aldolfo. You must remember my name for when we are making love. And you are screaming! You must say the right name or... It will spoil everything! How can I make you remember? I'm sure that you have heard the name Aldolfo, a ladies' man who wins the claim Aldolfo. Well, lovely miss, I am that same Aldolfo. I introduce myself. I am Aldolfo. Nice to meet you. Shall we? Not so fast. So just in case you didn't hear Aldolfo, I'll try to make it very clear, Aldolfo. The lovely ladies always cheer Adolfo. When I repeat myself, I am Adolfo. Understood. I can sing it high, Adolfo. I can sing it low, Adolfo. I can sing it very fast. I can sing it very slowly. I'd do it for you now, but it would take hours. Now let us see if you can remember my name. I'll give it a shot. Now who's the fellow that you see? Altofo. And how should you refer to me? Altofo. 
And who is it that always be? Adolfo. Now I'll sing it proudly. You are Adolfo. Now let me spell it out for Joe. For our two lovely ladies who didn't hear for some reason, because maybe you are hard of hearing or something. I don't know. It goes. Ah, 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 ah. Do, ho, ho, That was my mother's favorite number. I think it was her secret fantasy to get swept off her feet by a Latin lover. Well, a real Latin lover, not a buffoon. But that's what musical theater is all about, right? Romantic fantasy, falling in love at the drop of the hat, spontaneous tangoing, suddenly finding yourself in the most romantic of situations. I'm an accident waiting to happen. Da 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 Robert, look out! Don't worry, madam. I'm getting married today, so I have to wear this blindfold. A blindfold? I'm I'm sorry. Who is it I'm speaking to? Anyhow? Why, it's me. I mean, me, me. Me, me from France. Well, this scene couldn't be more ridiculous. So, you are marrying Janet Vandercraft, no? Oui. I hear she's very beautiful. Oui. And glamorous. Ah, oui, oui. Is it true that she has an exceptionally broad range and excels at playing both comedic and dramatic roles? Say, I'm having trouble placing your accent. What part of France did you say you were from? Oh. Uh, the middle part, where they make the toast. So, you are telling me about your, how do you say it in English, fiancé? That's right. So tell me, when was the moment you knew she was the only one for you? It's a funny story, actually. She and I were standing on the Lido deck of the Ile de France. Yes. I was amusing her with stories of my father's oil interests. And then what happened? I looked into her eyes, her big, glamorous eyes, and I began to feel all woozy. And then you fell. <clears throat> and then you fell? Yep. Right on my keister. And then I said, well, I guess I don't have my sea legs yet. But we haven't left the dock. That's what she said. And that's when I knew it must be love. And then you said? And then I said, there was a time I could stop on a dime. Forbearance was one of my talents. But since you've been around, I can't hold my ground. I'm consistently losing my balance. I'm an accident waiting to happen. I'm a mishap about to ensue. I'm the toy on the stairs, the three-legged chair, a hem that's been caught by a shoe. When my two lovesick arms started flapping, there was nothing my ankles could do. 
I'm an accident waiting to happen. So how be I happen to you? And then what happened? Oh, well, and then she joined in. When men say I'm sweet and they fall at my feet, my heart doesn't beat any faster. But when you lose control, it touches my soul. So embracing myself for disaster, you're an accident waiting to happen. That's right. A catastrophe destined to be. That's me. I'm the rags in the cellar. A broken umbrella. A, a branch, branch hanging, hanging loose from, from a tree. tree. I can see myself jumping and clapping for a man who lives dangerously. You're I'm an, an accident, accident waiting to happen. happen. So Well, and then we kiss. I'm an accident waiting to happen. So hurry and happen to me. done wait well it seems that the blindfold and the fake french accent have led to a terrible misunderstanding but will it work out in the end of course it will it's a musical everything always works out in the end in real life nothing ever works out and the only people who break out into song are the hopelessly deranged Where's that philandering foreigner? Mr. Feltzig! How long can it take to seduce one bride? Mr. Feltzig! You don't need Janet no more. I've been working on a new mind reading act. Presenting Kitty, the incomprehensible! Okay, now think of a number between five and seven. Six. No. Now I'm thinking of something, all right. Wait. I'm getting something. Pick up some milk and a loaf of rye bread. And don't forget to shave your leg. You're reading your own mind, you idiot. Well, no wonder it was so easy. <sighs> Mr. Feltzig. It would appear that the wedding is proceeding according to schedule. Now it's time you received your just desserts. What do you think, partner? Should we whip up something special for Mr. Feldzig? Yeah. How about a Toledo surprise? An inspired choice. A Toledo surprise? I've never heard of that. No, you haven't. Those people who have heard of it are generally never heard from again. We'll share the recipe with you. First, you chop the nuts. Then you pound the dough. Then you bake it up. Nice and slow. And then, then you, you got, got a Toledo. Toledo, Toledo surprise. surprise. <laughs> Could you run that by me again? <laughs> it's a very simple recipe, Mr. Feldzig. First, you chop the nuts. Then you pound the dough. Then you bake it up nice, nice and slow. And then, then you, you got, got a Toledo. Toledo surprise. Say, why don't we give him a little taste? All right. Hold it. What style, what grace, what rhythm. Open your fists. Now shake them and give me that recipe one more time. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Go. Chop the nuts. 
pound of dough. Bake it up front, nice and slow. Then you got a Toledo, Toledo surprise. Now sell it. Pit the peach, peel the skin, mush it up, blow it in. That's a tasty Toledo, Toledo surprise. Now First you're cooking. you feed it up, then you sweet it up. When you heat it up, if it tries to rise, don't let it. It's a snap. Try it, folks. Whip your whites, split your yolks, then you got a Splendido. Toledo surprise. You boys are naturals. Honest? Keep it up. I'll go work on the contracts. Hey! hey! A five, six, seven, eight. Oh, Mr. Fantastic, what's going on here? Kitty, I'm developing a new act. Toledo surprise. You mean you're putting gangsters in the show? And you won't put me in. They're not even in the union! Shh, Kitty, you got it all wrong. The new act, it's for you. And these boys are your backup dancers. Backup dancers? Holy cats! What that hot Toledo does to my libido? Good? Mm, yes, indeed. Oh, check me, yum, yum. Surprise! Squeeze the cream, grease the pan, flip the spoon, flip the plan, makes you bust your tuxedo. Adolfo, you make announcement. Wedding is off. What? For the love of God, why? Adolfo has made love to bride. No. That's not the bride, you idiot. That's the chaperone. What? The wedding is on. The wedding is off. What? Robert kissed a French girl. Her name is Mimi. She's very beautiful. I, I didn't mean to, Janet. She was just like you, only French. Oh, sweet mother of pearl. Underling? Yes, madam? What is all this commotion about? The wedding, madam. Ooh, is there going to be a wedding? <laughs> Not anymore. Oh. oh, what a tragedy. What a wonderful, wonderful tragedy. Clear the floor, boys. I'll show you how it's done. First you beat it up, then you sweet it up. When you heat it up, if it tries to rise, don't let it. Toledo surprise. Surprise. Wait until it's ready. Surprise. Wait until it's ready. Surprise. Wait until it's ready. Now it's looking ready. Surprise. You got it. Makes me twitch. Makes me shake. This dessert takes the cake, hits me like a torpedo. Toledo surprise! Toledo surprise! Toledo surprise! 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 surprise.
That's it. The curtain is closed and it's time for intermission. I don't like intermissions. Well, they ruin the magic, you know? They yank you back into reality. One moment you're sitting there, lost in a world full of music and romance. And then, bang! You're surrounded by tourists, the crinkling of candy wrappers, and the nattering about the lack of women's restrooms. I mean, it's cruel. Oh, it's a power bar. I have a bit of a blood sugar issue. I've got to eat small meals all day long or else I get jittery. I know it's rude, but it's better than the alternative. Believe you me. Believe you me. I remember my wedding day. I didn't eat breakfast, and the ceremony wasn't until four in the afternoon. <laughs> wow, I do, I do. <laughs> what? Are you surprised that I was married? Well, there you are, making assumptions about people. I'm a very complicated person. And now I have to use the restroom. But maybe you do too. I'll be back shortly, maybe in 15 minutes. Hello. <laughs> I'm back and feeling much better. But I, I'm still a little jittery. I think I'm going to go and try and find another power bar. But while you guys are waiting, I think I'll start Act Two. chaperone.
That was from a different musical entirely. I have a woman who comes in once a month. Can I say that? I have a woman? Anyways, she cleans the stuff that I absolutely refuse to clean. She's very good, but she has a bad habit of touching my records and putting them away in the wrong sleeves. Even though I tell her, no touch records, Carmella, no touch records. <laughs> I suppose if I talked to her in complete sentences, she'd stop touching my records. Anyways, that was act two from a different Gable and Stein show called The Enchanted Nightingale. A degrading piece of chinoiserie about an emperor who's told by his magic bird to marry his elocutionist instead of his betrothed. And he ends up building the Great Wall of China. A slap in the face to 4,000 years of Chinese history. It had some wonderful tunes, though. That was Beatrice Stockwell as American Lady. And did you recognize that Roman Bartelli was the emperor? Ah, yes. He was a man of a thousand accents. All of them insulting. <laughs> Act two of the drowsy chaperone begins with this. A haunting lament from a very depressed bride. She sings it standing on her balcony, bathed in the pale blue light of a sympathetic moon, which is ridiculous because it's the middle of the afternoon. Now, while you're listening to this, try to ignore the lyrics. They're not the best, but it truly does communicate the bride's state of mind. Just ignore the lyrics. I put a monkey on a pedestal And tried to make that monkey stay And he did for a time, but he needed to climb and with other monkeys play far away. He left his jacket on that pedestal beside his tiny rusty cup. And I haven't got the strength to pick them up. Oh, monkey, 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 you broke my heart. But I'll always save that pedestal for you. I'm just going to pour myself a brandy. Come, my little monkey. Come, my little monkey. Do. The melody is so simple, it just floats in the air. And I must admit, I do get a little misty-eyed when I think of that jacket lying there on that pedestal. It's long sleeves dangling on the floor. Oh, oh monkey, 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 you broke my heart in two. But I'll always save that pedestal for, for you. Come, my little monkey, come. My little monkey do. Okay, here we go. Wait. Who are you? I'm Janet Vandegraaff. Do you need anyone? I don't need anyone. But what about the love of one man? What do I care about the love of one man when I am adored by millions? Do I need to be so gloomy? No, no, no. no. I can rule the world if so I chose. Sigmund Freud, this flowers to me every show. Gertrude Stein, she had me a rose. Now she really lets go. I'm Janet, Janet Van de Graaff. Ain't no nail that I can't hammer. Why give up a life of glamour? Life of glamour, life of glamour, no! Monkey, monkey, I love this part. She's having a complete mental breakdown. Monkey, monkey, monkey. I'm an accident waiting to happen. I don't want to show up no more. I don't want to spread mirth no more. Be the greatest on earth no more. I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to, I want to, I don't, I do. Sure. 
to time in CAD, who drives me a the monkey or my pedestal I Number. It has a little bit of everything. A little Busby Berkeley, a little Jane Goodall. <laughs> and I think that's another thing I like about theater in general. When a character's in crisis, well, they sing and they dance, which is so much more interesting than just whining about it. But that's with musical theater in general. <laughs> You see, you see, this is what I'm talking about. You're happy for about five seconds and then something starts ringing. What a beautiful day for a wedding. Shall I have the pews removed now or would you prefer I wait until morning? Okay, I'm gonna stop here so I don't get interrupted by any more ringing. Here we have two vaudeville performers who have slipped through the cracks of time. They are Noelle Fitzpatrick and Ukulele Lil. I don't know anything about them. I suppose Ukulele Lil plays the ukulele, but she doesn't in this show. Actually, I, I tried to find out more about her. I looked through all my books and I even tried looking through the internet. But all my searches always ended in Tiny Tim's autopsy photographs. Still, they're both charming. <laughs> Why would you have the pews removed? The bride has called off the wedding, madam. Oh, Anjali, never listen to a bride on her wedding day. Love is a very complex emotion. Anjali. Yes, madam? You can be very close to someone one minute, and the next minute, why, you just want to strangle them. Do you understand? I'm familiar with the urge to strangle. Yes. You see, that's just the nature of love. Love makes lovers worry. Love makes lovers fret, but here's a fact on which we can depend. Just like long ago when Romeo loved Juliet, love is always lovely in the end. But Romeo and Juliet was a tragedy, madam. I never read reviews. Love can start a quarrel, love can cause a din, but love has always been a trusty friend. Twas a happy fate for Hank the Eight and Anne Bolvin. Love is always lovely in the end. Might I remind you, madam, that Anne Boleyn lost her head? Oh, well, yes, she was in love. Love was good to Eve and Adam. Here we go again. And Samson and Delilah, too. Good grief. May I pose a question, madam? Why, yes, of course. Why does nothing I say to you ever get through? Don't mind if I do. Oh, 
I found that quite taxing. Excuse me, madam, while I pour myself a glass of ice water. Love sticks up behind you. Love drops from above. But love would never consciously offend. Love has certainly been kind to me and my true love. Love is always lovely in the end. But your late husband was a brute. I don't mean him, you sweet coot. <sighs> Oh, madam. Love is always lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love is always lovely in the end. Love is always lovely in the end. Yes, that was charming. But to be frank, on some level, that number pisses me off. I'm gonna say something here, and I know I've been drinking. But I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that love is not always lovely in the end. Often in the end, there are lawyers. And another thing, and another thing. I guess what I'm saying is, is that number is naive. And irresponsibly so. I'm sorry. I just thought that should be said for the benefit of the young people. I won't interrupt anymore. Oh, but there is a moment coming up that I have become fascinated with. Chaperone, I'm in a terrible state. You certainly are. You can't go to a wedding looking like that. Oh, you poor dear. Haven't you heard? The wedding's been called off. Oh, oh not your wedding. Mine. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Might I borrow your veil? You're getting married? But to whom? La 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 Ah, beautiful lady with baffled expression. You're marrying Aldolfo? I know it's surprising, but when I look into his eyes, his big clumsy eyes, I get all <clears throat> drowsy. <sighs> and that's love, isn't it? Yes, dear, that's love. Help me! There you are. All right. I'm going to put my cards on the table. I got a weak heart. I can't take the pressure. If this goes on any longer, the old ticker's going to give out. Please, tell me. Is there going to be a wedding or not? Yes. <gasps> Thank the good Lord in heaven! Aldolfo and the chaperone are getting married. What?! I have wonderful news. There's going to be a wedding. We know. You know? Yes, we just heard. Oh, but who told you? I did. <clears throat> but how do you know? Now, what difference does it make? Mrs. Tottendale and I are to, mar to be married at 7.30 this evening in the garden. What? What? Oh, yes. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. Say, what kind of cockamamie wedding is this? Everybody's getting married except the bride and groom. There you are, Janet. I've been looking everywhere for you. Hello, Mr. Martin. Don't say that. Can't you find it in your heart to marry me? It's our wedding day, and George went to all this trouble. A and I do love you. More than I can say. But you kissed another woman. Yes. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but when I was kissing that French girl, it felt like I was kissing you. Oh, Robert, you were kissing me. You're Mimi? Wow, that French accent was remarkably accurate. Why, thank you. I developed it when I played Monique in Hold That Baguette. 
the fact that you would fool me makes me love you even more. Oh, Robert. There you are. Now, before you do anything, think about this. No matter how well you play the role of happy wife, you'll never, ever get a standing ovation. Oh, I just don't know. Oh, I'm so confused. Chaperone, please. I beg you, just this one time, give me some advice that is coherent and appropriate to the situation. <laughs> Should I marry Robert? Now, this is the moment I was talking about. Not only the culmination of the plot, but a moment that has fascinated me and brought me back to this record again and again. Okay, here it comes. Well, my advice to you is... And this is it, listen! While you can! You hear that? You can't quite mic out what she says because someone dropped a cane. I'll play it for you again. While you can. Is she saying live while you can or leave while you can? While you can. I mean, it's Beatrice Stockwell, so it might just be a cynical quip. But that's what you think when you're standing up there on the altar, right? Do I live or do I leave? And you choose to live. Well, because you do love her in some way. I mean, it's not an exact science. An arrow doesn't come down from the sky and point to the one you're supposed to be with. So, one day you say it to someone. You say, I love you. But you phrase it as a question and then she accepts it as a fact. <laughs> and then suddenly, there she is, standing in front of you in a $3,000 wedding dress with tears in her eyes. And her nephew made the chuppah. <laughs> so, what do you do? Do you say, I was joking? I, I was kidding? No, you live. You choose to live. Yeah, and for a couple of months, you look at that alien lump next to you in bed. And you think, who are you? <laughs> who are you? And then one day, you say it out loud. <laughs> and then it's trial separation and couples counseling and all your conversations about her eating disorder and your Zoloft addiction. And then you're constantly redefining, reevaluating, revisiting until you finally lose the deposit on your house. And then the relationship ends on a particularly ugly note with your only copy of, copy of Gypsy spinning through the air and smashing against the living room wall. But in a larger sense, in a broader sense, it's better to have lived than left, right? While you can. You have no idea how many times I've listened to that. Oh, Shapro, you certainly have a way with words. Robert, my answer is yes, I will marry you. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Mr. Feldzig, it looks like this wedding is a done deal. Now you're in truffle. <laughs> and there's muffin you can do about it. Oh, but there is. I found a replacement, a new leading lady. Presenting Kitty the Incredible. Okay, Kitty, now concentrate and show the boys you can read my mind. My mind. Well, what are you waiting for? You ladies go put on your frillies. We'll all get married in one big clump. That's how they do it in Utah. <laughs> George, I don't know how you did it. Four weddings in one day, it looks like you're everyone's best man. I am? Of yes. course. I am. Hip, hip, hip hooray! He's George, that's George, the best man, George. I'm honored to be doing what a best.
best man ought. He's basking in the glory of a fight well fought. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime, wedding bells will celebrate a happy wedding time. I forgot the minister. Who the hell are you? I'm Trix, the aviatrix, queen of the sky. To Rio I was wending when my engine needed bending. to Rio for Carnival. But, but the wait, the, the captain of a ship can perform a marriage. Yes. And the pilot is comparable to a captain. Yes. yes. And that plane is kind of sheep. And it's some call it the sheep of the air. An air sheep. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wait, I got a tricks. You can marry them on the plane, and then we'll all have the honeymoon in Rio. <laughs> Occasionally. It's an old apartment with terrible wiring. Just concentrate. Keep the show alive in your minds. Don't talk to anyone. Don't let yourselves be distracted. I'll find the fuse box. Everybody be quiet. It's the super. Oh, God. Hi. Hello. The lights are out. Yes. Yeah. We had to shut the power off because we were replacing the breaker panels in the basement? Yes. So we replaced it, but when we turned the power off, all the breakers in the apartments tripped. Yes. That's what happens. It's normal. Yes. So I got to go reset your breakers. Uh, now? Uh, it'd only take a second. All right, all right, all right. Because I tried calling earlier, but there was no answer. Oh, <laughs> I've been having some troubles with the phone. <laughs> ah, here we go. I found it. <laughs> what 
was that? Um, it was a record. What kind of music was that? It was just a show, you know, a musical. You like musicals? No. I love musicals. My wife and I go all the time. It's amazing what they can do nowadays. Did you see Miss Saigon? They landed a helicopter on the stage in that one. Yeah, I've seen them all. I've seen Cats, Les Mis, Saturday Night Fever, but you know I like the movie better. Oh, really? Well then, um, goodbye. Well, that's it. The moment is ruined. One note away from the end of the show, and the mood is broken. I should start the record over again. I, I can't do that. Can I? Oh, it's so frustrating. You have to understand, I love this show so much, and I've never even seen it. My mother gave me the record. It was just before my father left us. Oh, he didn't leave because of the record, but I'm sure it didn't help matters much. Look, I know the show isn't perfect. The spit take scene is lame, and the monkey motif is labored. But none of that matters. It does what a show is supposed to do. It takes you to another world and leaves you with a little, little tune to carry with you in your head. You know? A little something to help you escape from the dreary horrors of the real world. A, a little something for when you're feeling blue. You know? On life's funny journey That we stumble along Into the blue We look here and we look there Seeking answers anywhere Never sure of where to turn or what to I'm do. an accident waiting to happen. Still we humble our way. I don't want to sing tunes no more. life's crazy laugh. Wedding bells will ring, wedding bells will chime. Toledo surprise. I am a Dolfo. Thank you.